I was honoured to be invited to speak at the Disability Wales Annual Conference to be held on the 12th of October. On being invited in August, I worked out that if I set off at 5.10am from my home in Weatherby, I could catch a bus, three trains and a taxi to arrive at the venue in Wrexham by 10am, and the same in reverse later. So I spent an hour and 15 minutes on the phone to Transpennine Express Assisted Travel, reserving the wheelchair spaces and ramps. Their text phone wasn't working as ever, they were unable to reserve the wheelchair space due to a system's fault, I was told Transpennine have first class wheelchair spaces when they don't, they couldn't check whether other train operators had first class wheelchair spaces, they couldn't work out how to include plus bus on the ticket, we had to arrange to change at Manchester Piccadilly as Oxford Road isn't fully accessible, and they put luggage assistance when it wouldn't have any, but you know, I can't have everything. So I emailed the Transpennine Transport Integration Manager, who fixed the system fault that had prevented the wheelchair space from being booked. After an hour and a quarter on the phone and 12 emails over 13 days, I finally had assistance booked. On the day, I caught that bus at 5.25am and the train from Leeds to Manchester. It didn't reach Manchester though. Shortly before arriving into Staley Bridge, the guard announced that he had just been informed that the train would terminate early and not complete the journey to Manchester as it was running 12 minutes late. That's when the fun started. Nobody came with the ramp. They're supposed to know that uh, you've got a wheelchair user on board who needs to get off. I mean, the conductor did. He was excellent, but very busy. The station staff didn't know. Nobody in control had told them. I don't think they realised that they got a pre-booked wheelchair user on board. And so everybody else got off, leaving me on the train on my own. I'll give him a shot and see if we get the... Uh, thing there. Yeah. So this is bloody great. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sorry about this, buddy. Honestly, it's not your fault, sir. The one saving grace of this whole trip was that nearly all of the train staff were simply marvellous. I've just literally found that. And this guy, it was no exception. He went well beyond the call of duty. Hello. Um, I'm Manage yourself, or do you want me to help you? I can manage, thanks. I'm really sure? stressed about what I'm going to do. Oh man, honestly. You alright? Um, right, just wait there. Let me just get this ramp back. I'll make sure you're okay. This gentleman was incredibly helpful, beyond the call of duty, really. He stayed with me, planned how I was going to move on from here, and in general, was just a really helpful gentleman. So, you've been very helpful indeed. What's your name? Thank you very much, I really appreciate it. It's all honestly, it's a shame of frustration. It's not so much frustration as stress not knowing what, what to do when you've helped with that. So thank you. These are all the people that had got off the cancelled train before me because I had to wait for the ramp and they are now waiting for the next train. Thank you very much guys, thank you. The wheelchair space at the front. And now they're jam-packing the next train so that when I finally get to the wheelchair entrance and somebody turns up with a ramp, I've got no chance of getting onto the bloomin' thing. This is an order service. I don't work on the order services, so I can't get ramps or anything like that. No sign of the guard or station staff with the ramp. Hint, hint, guys, please move down the train. Oh yeah, only she's moving. I mean, I know it's difficult for everybody, but still, you know. Exactly where you're going. Don't, 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 don't,
A taxi all the way to Wrexham, really? So whilst all my fellow passengers are on the way to Manchester, I start the interminable wait for a taxi. As always, Staley Bridge Station staff were very helpful and friendly. I'm now running three quarters of an hour late. There are two trains that I could have caught that would have taken me to Manchester Piccadilly. I've missed my connection at Manchester Piccadilly already by now, and there's still no sign of a taxi. This is all really blooming frustrating. Well, like waiting for Godot, I tell you. Half past eight, he said it's looking like. Okay. I'm going to um, to Wrexham, to Manchester, and Chester, my assistant's going to be. Right. For the room. Uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, it's not going to be any later. Well, I mean, we could, we could have got on another train, but it was they were packed out the minute, and when you cancel one, it's right. So she said she's going to bring me back. So as soon as she brings me back for definite, I'll come out and let you know. Pop. Thank you. All right. You want a cup of coffee or anything? Or? That's very kind of you, know Thank you. Right. But appreciate right. the offer. Hey, what a lovely guy. Sorry, I've had to come over from Piccadilly, so. About Piccadilly? Yeah. So it's took me a bit of time to get here. That's why we were waiting, because the taxi that Transpennine had booked was between 20 and 50 minutes drive away. The taxi took me to Manchester Piccadilly, not to Wrexham, of course, which is perhaps just as well as I had to travel backwards, hunched over, and with the back of my head pressed against the roof. Thank you for your help. Oh, you're welcome. Another exceptionally friendly and helpful member of staff. 
I am now running about an hour and three quarters late. This was the train from Manchester I was originally supposed to catch. If I had managed to squeeze onto that pacer, I would have caught this train and would have been under an hour late. But the delays caused by the taxi meant I missed all these trains and I was eventually put on this one, making me over two hours late. I needed the toilet, but I didn't dare use it at Staley Bridge in case I missed my taxi. And of course, unlike the train, the taxi doesn't have a disabled loo. The train from Manchester I was originally supposed to catch had a disabled toilet, but I know not all of them do, so I asked the Manchester station staff whether this later train would have one. They told me there was. Platform staff claimed that this toilet is wheelchair accessible, which it clearly isn't. I faced a further hour without access to the loo. I didn't want to be any later to the conference than I already was, so I couldn't get off and catch a later train. During the journey, my catheter backed up, causing bladder spasms and severe pain, and ultimately significant bypassing, soaking me and my clothes in my urine. The train to Wrexham was also running late, so instead of arriving in Wrexham at 9.42, I arrived at 12.06. There I discovered that there were no wheelchair accessible taxis, only wheelchair inaccessible ones. I was forced to wheel to the conference through Storm Callum. I arrived at the conference two and a half hours late, soaked in urine and rain, extremely embarrassed, stressed and exhausted. Not the best condition in which to give a talk or to spend the rest of the day. And of course, I knew I had the whole journey to do in reverse. Yeah, thanks Transpennine. You knew I was on that train you cancelled. You knew the journey I was undertaking and that disabled people suffer disproportionately when journeys are disrupted. You are obliged to proactively make alternative arrangements when assistance bookings are invalidated by disruption. So why did you cancel that train just for running 12 minutes late? And why did I find myself arriving at my destination two and a half hours late, soaked in piss and rain? How would you like that? Why are we waiting? Why are we waiting? Oh, why are we waiting? Oh, why do we wait? Why?